Has there ever been a battle more in the bag than this one? Hello people, this is Kubashi with a new guide on Juggernaut Offlane as of the new patch 6.83 that was just implemented. Juggernaut has had some issues in the previous patches, whereas his beginning has not been up to par with other heroes, but with the recent change in uh, 6 plus Aggie to the hero itself, Juggernaut now has a place among one of the best winning heroes in the current meta. The reasoning for this is quite simple, since Juggernaut prior to the new 6.83 patch had problems lasting him without having a Quelling Blade in his inventory. This has not been remedied thanks to the 6 plus Aggie that helps tremendously during his laning phase, and also serves to add nice tank ability to the hero itself. Now you might ask yourself, why exactly Juggernaut offlane when there's so many other heroes as well? Well, Juggernaut in this current meta at 6.83 fills the same space that Faceless Void did prior and now is able to carry and still become a lethal threat on the offlane itself. I personally go for Start Shield, a Ring of Protection, set of Tangos and a Branch. This allows you different options as far as building items goes. Our aim with this is to turn the Stout Shield into a Borman Shield and the Ring of Protection into a Brasilius, inevitably into an Aquila if you so desire, since it will help your regeneration on lane by quite a margin. Since the Borman Shield has a 100% chance of blocking enemy hero damage to a certain degree, it helps Juggernaut sustain a lot of damage that would usually come from supports and makes you a beast to be reveled with on lane. Your aim with Juggernaut offlane is usually the same as what you'd see in Void offlane in previous patches. You want to get as much farm as possible since you'll become a carry in the late game, and you'll actually become quite a force to be reckoned with by mid game if you get an Aghanim Scepter relatively early. On top of that, you're very hard to kill, and with the new added 6 plus agility, Juggernaut has a very easy time actually last hitting, and it's hard to get him out of the lane very easily because of his healing ward. Notice here how Ricky's poor positioning results in me getting a kill. Ricky is surprised by the amount of damage I'm able to dish out, but Blade Dance from Juggernaut does a lot of damage. Of While on offensive ability, the Juggernaut spin can also save you by using it defensively on stuns that would otherwise have killed you or magic damage from support heroes. Don't be afraid of getting rough with Juggernaut offlane since he has a lot of damage to dish out with his critical strike, which is very likely to happen due to the high percentages the spell has naturally. Compared to other offlaners, Juggernaut has the ability to passively crit his enemy a lot more often than others because there's such a high percentage chance of it happening that you can actually use it to harass quite effectively with. Juggernaut offlane can be built in a lot of different ways, but it's pretty important that by mid game, at the very least, you have an Aghanim Scepter going for you. After you're done with Scepter, you should really be looking into getting some damage items. Exactly what you decide to buy really boils down to what you're playing against. There are games where the enemy team flat out doesn't allow you to buy any damaging items and you simply have to go for a BKB due to the magic immunity it provides you. However, do remember that you have the Juggernaut spin for that very same effect. Damage items you might want to invest in usually boils down to orb effect items like Maelstrom or Desolator who works really really well together with Juggernaut's ultimate. These offensive items mixed with your healing ward will make you into an incredible hero that's good in team fights and is really really adept at pushing as well, due to just how much your healing ward actually heals over time. Ideally, you really want to get a push going with Juggernaut's healing ward, but due to how public games can be, teammate assistance is not always the best. Do what you can, and if you can't push with your team, go for farming instead. The reason why Juggernaut is so good is because he's good at pushing, but he's also a late game carry. Once a substantial amount of items have been acquired, the true power of Juggernaut shows itself to you as you can kill your opponents at the pure blink of an eye. In the end, Juggernaut has always been a strong hero in itself, but it is the patch of 6.83 that's really put him in the front rows with the big boys, with the 6 plus agility really helping this hero in the early game. He's now become a lot more tanky in the early game, and in the late game, he hard carries with some of the best of them, courtesy of how strong Omnilash actually is. I urge people to pick up Juggernaut and experiment with him, since he now has a lot more viability in the current meta than ever before. I personally had a pleasant experience with Juggernaut as a whole ever since the patch employed. Due to the 6 plus agility, he really is that much easier to lane during the laning phase, because of how much it adds to his survivability. Out of 5 offlane juggernaut only matches, I only lost one of them, which really shows how big an impact this recent patch had on juggernaut, since prior I would not have been able to do so on the offlane only.
Thanks for watching my solo offlane juggernauts guide. I hope I was able to shed some light on a hero that prior was not used a whole lot in matchmaking, but now is way more viable than ever before. If you liked what you saw, consider subscribing here on my YouTube channel. You can also find more on vvv.kubashi.com or at my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash fapkubashi.com. Thanks for watching.